Hey friends, welcome back to the Intentional Mind Podcast. On today's episode, we're talking about simple switches that you can make to be more holistically healthy. This is going to help boost your energy so that you feel better and then you end up showing up better and creating better results in your life, which I know we're all about. So this is separated into two parts. So two episodes, we're going to be talking about being holistically healthy and leaving you with strategies that you can easily implement. So this is part one of the two-part series. And we have a special guest on the show who specifically studies naturopathy. So she's all about holistic living. So she's got amazing tips for us. And ever since hearing this episode, because I've had a couple weeks to implement what I learned, I can tell you that if you implement what we talk about here, you are going to feel so much better because that's how I've been feeling, just more energized. I feel proud of just how I feel in my body. It's like, it's an energy thing, but it's like a mind, body, spirit connection thing happening. So we're gonna talk about that as well. All right, so let me tell you about our guest. Her name is Sylvia Maurer. She is one of my dear friends. I actually met her through her husband, who I used to work with, so I'm so grateful that we got a chance to connect. She is my go-to person when I'm curious about some natural strategy that I can implement in my life to help me with something that I may be struggling with. Or just, I'm always curious about anything I can do to boost my energy. So she's just got a lot of great tips for us. She lives in the state of Wisconsin. She's originally from Germany. You'll pick up on that when you hear her speak. She lives on a hemp and bee farm. So one of her favorite sayings is to be hempy, H-E-M-P-Y, because that goes along with her whole brand. She makes her own CBD products, so lotions, creams, drops. She has a gift for making things that make you feel better. And she is so well-researched and studies this stuff and practices it. In fact, her passion for this kind of work started with her husband. She's on a mission to help him get off of all of his medications from Big Pharma. And has he's been starting to make all these natural switches and seeing the benefits of them. That's what drew me into wanting to know her. Because I remember the things he was doing. I saw the teas he was drinking. I was like, "Who? who's giving you this stuff? And it was Sylvia. So I'm excited that she's on the show today. And today we are emphasizing six different strategies that you can implement in your life. So I will recap them at the very end. And also at the end of this episode, I'm going to share with you some more resources that I have found to be really helpful that align with what we learn on this episode. And I really believe if you start to implement them, like I said, you're going to feel so much better. All right. So stay tuned for that at the very end. So for now, without further ado, welcome Sylvia to the show. I want to jump right into it with something that you said to me. You said, if you want to have true inner peace, then you need to be holistically healthy and consider a balance of the body, mind, and spirit. So I'm curious what you meant by that, and I want you to elaborate on that. For example, you can't just think about your body, healing your body, eating natural and eating healthy without at the same time um, resolving arguments with other people. If you are not at peace with with your soul and your, your spirit and mind, if you have things that bother you, you should really try to resolve them. So it's It's a holistic approach, really, and you can't separate those things from each other. That makes sense. Yes, I love it. It makes perfect sense. It's like when you're trying to focus on just what you're eating and thinking that that's going to improve your overall energy in your life, but you're not focusing on what's happening in your mind or in your spirit. Yes, yes, It's like because you're an energetic being and you consist of all these different parts. And you need to be considering that when you're thinking about being holistically healthy. Right. And if you if you are um, having, for example, struggles in your life with some something makes you um, 
something prevents you actually from being content, then you should actually ask yourself, okay, what can I do to, to eliminate that discontent from my life? And then you have to take an active approach and can't just say, well, I'll just float along in life. You have to say, okay, this is what I want. And now I'm going after it. And that is actually one of the things that you helped me with, if I may put that in, because those last two years when I uh, when I uh, participated in your workshop, those really made me focus on what I want, what is important to me. You know, where other people will say, well, money is important to me. I'm money really doesn't mean that much to me. So I would rather see people happy. And a lot of times my, my uh, daughter says, well, you should price your stuff higher or in Madison, it's a lot more expensive. And then I'm like, no, I, you know, I, I want to make it affordable for people and money is not that important, but your workshops really helped me to figure out what I wanted to do. And a lot of times my life felt like, I was envious of people that they knew where they were in life. And now I'm thinking, whoa, you know, every uh, career path that I took that turned out to be horrible in the end actually prepared me to exactly where I want to be right now. So, so I'm, for example, I was a, uh, a sales rep for water softener. I can't sell things for nothing, <laughs> and, you know. And now I, uh, but that that actually uh, prepared me to know a lot of things about water. Then I was um, a telephonic interviewer for an insurance company. Boring job tied to my desk. But in those five years, I learned everything, every possible, I heard every possible diagnosis, disease that there was, and the pharmaceutical products that are applied to those diseases. So, so now I'm like, oh, that, that all fits in. And that all helps me out so much in my career as naturopath. So for the first time, I'm so excited that I am following my path that I am supposed to be on. It's really great. Oh, I love that for you. That's such a good yeah. feeling. It's like when you know that the actions that you are taking are in alignment with who you truly want to be. And the reason why I wanted you to come on today is because you have so much wisdom around doing things in a natural way that really help you have more energy and you really practice what it is that you preach. And I've been so curious about, there's so many things I could talk to you forever about all the, the things that you are doing, the strategies that you are using to feel your best and to help other people feel their best. So I'm really curious about some of those things, like what are at the top of your head, what are some of those things that we can be doing or switches that we can make in our life so that we can have more energy and that we can overall be more holistically healthy? Don't get overwhelmed. Don't try to do all of the things at once because it takes, it takes one step after another. You can't run before you can't walk so try to be good to yourself and say okay so i can't be a hundred percent holistic by tomorrow and implement single and small steps to get in the habit of changing one thing after another learn how to read labels and those are really very easy things that um that you can learn so fast and once you implement them it's it's it has so many positive side effects that it draws along it's really amazing definitely it's like watch for the overwhelm because if you think yeah i want to be holistically healthy in my mind my body and my spirit it's like really easy to get overwhelmed around. I need to change yeah. my entire diet. I need to start really thinking this way. I need to be spending time meditation and prayer or whatever it is. It's like, you're not right. doing any of those things or need a journal. It's like, it can feel very overwhelming. 
So yes. it's important to zoom in on things that you can start doing that are very small, but then also make a huge difference. Like you said, reading yeah. labels. So when it comes to labels, what are some of the things that we should be looking for in, in labels to help us be healthy? Okay, a very simple example that I just recently stumbled over. My Amish neighbor is making homemade maple syrup. And when he created his label, really the only ingredient is maple sap. Very easy, nothing else. And then I found a very old, and he gave me one of the bottles. And um, in the very back of my refrigerator, I found a store-bought maple syrup bottle. And I read through 17 different ingredients and not one thing maple not one thing it insane. has like, it, it, you know it's insane really um it had like some uh sugary syrup then fr high fructose corn syrup then caramel for coloring and then all kinds of crazy chemicals to keep all of the things stable in there and i was like wow okay here is maple sap and here is a list of 17 ingredients that I can't hardly pronounce because they're chemicals. That is easy. Yeah. So it's like things that have the less amount of ingredients or that like if you can't understand the ingredient, then those are some yeah. of the red flags for you. And also like thinking about sugar, like sugar, so often people be like, well, this has zero sugar. And it's like, oh, but sugar is disguised in so many different ways. Yes. Yeah, like, yes. The fructose, the sucralose, the blah, 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 like there's so many different things. So I yeah. always just go with like labels too. I'll look on the back and be like, is this a bunch of crap in here? I don't understand it and can't pronounce. Then yeah. uh, probably not a good thing for me. And trying to keep things in its whole, its most whole form as much exactly. as possible. And you, you said that the keyword there uh, in the most natural, holistic, whole form so if you for example another red flag for me is ice creams and dan my husband really loves ice cream so when i when i started to read labels i was like oh my god i mean there's horrible stuff in here also the fake sugars and then emulsifiers to keep the the creams and the 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 watery stuff uh, combined and i'm like no there has to be a healthier way and I did not find any holistic ice cream, so I bought an ice cream maker. So in and it's so easy to make your own ice cream. It's actually fun, you know. You yeah. have the cream, and you have um, I put either honey, our own honey, in there, or maple uh, syrup from my Amish neighbor now, and some some fruit. Sometimes I throw some berries in there or some nuts. It's it's really actually fun to make your own ice cream, and an ice cream maker is is not very expensive, and it's so rewarding because when you eat it, then you know you're eating good ingredients. It's healthy for your body. It's nourishing. Yeah. No chemicals at all and you it does not go bad you freeze it you know so I love that it's like being encouraged to to make a lot of these things on our own and sometimes we use the excuse that it's going to take forever like it's it's too inconvenient but actually like you could in an hour decide like for the entire week batch out all of the the uh dessert stuff that you want to eat the entire week that are healthy versions of yeah. things that you normally would pick up. You can even do it in less than that. I try to do that each week is like pick a chunk of time where I'm like, I know I'm going to get a little sweet tooth this week. So we're going to plan for these healthier versions. And I love the idea of the ice cream maker. My sister got one for my nephew for Christmas so that they're, they can make ice cream together. And it's like with a kid that loves ice cream, it's so no. fun for him to, to yeah. put, like to see it getting developed and to have yeah. your kid be a part of that process and then add I like, the toppings and just know that what you're giving him and you guys are eating together is so much better for you. It's way more enjoyable when you know it's yeah. really good quality. It's worth, even if it did take more time, it's worth it. But I also feel like the time shouldn't be an excuse because you can actually do a lot of this stuff in way less time. So for me, when I'm craving any of that, one of the, I don't have an ice cream maker, but the quick things that I do like is even taking bananas and just my frozen bananas and throwing those in my blender 
and adding like cacao or a yeah. peanut butter or like something like that and mixing it like my husband loves that when I just do that he like is like this is like the best ice cream and it's just like frozen bananas mixed yeah. up with like <laughs> peanut butter it's like it's yeah. not even ice cream but it works for him and it gets that yeah. you know it feels like ice cream or kind of tastes like it so there's easy things that you can do that pay off that make you feel so much better and more because this comes back to energy because when you eat the crap yeah. stuff you're gonna feel like crap Yes. Your energy is going to yeah. dip down. You will be more irritated. You don't yeah. show up as your best self. You don't feel confident in your body. Like there's a domino effect of bad things. And then you have long-term health issues as a result of it. So this stuff does matter. And those those whole ingredients actually make your body whole too, because they nourish you while all those chemicals actually that are preservatives in foods and canned food in in um uh, jarred uh, well canned foods really um all those preservatives they are toxins that will accumulate in your body that's where sometimes alzheimer's has it's it's mm -hmm. uh, pause because all those those preservatives and toxins actually accumulate at some point so you really that's where i think to to strive for a toxin-free life is something that everybody should do it's not something revolutionary i just thought you know i don't want to eat all that crap and a lot of things started when i actually moved to america because i thought oh that's that's great food how did you make this dish and then uh, people gave me the recipes with a cream of mushroom soup, a creamed corn, and and I'm like, what? Those are all cans thrown together. That's not cooking. And I have to give kudos to my mother. She started everything from scratch. So I grew up with cooking from scratch. And Dan thought, oh my God, you're such a great cook. And I'm like, mm, that's not even a quarter of my, what my mom did, you know, but I really think um, that our society has become so convenience driven. And yeah. in order to actually maximize and become your best self, you have to go through stretches that might be inconvenient. So to make your own ice cream, yeah, it's not as convenient as just opening the freezer and opening a jar of store-bought ice cream but it's so much more rewarding and it gives you that energy I, I like it that you actually connect that to positive energy because it totally is positive energy oh I love that and that's the thing that's the issue that we need to like zoom in on is the fact that we want everything to be so quick and convenient and at yeah. what cost at what cost yeah. we really need to think about that because it doesn't lead long term, it leads to issues. So you're just shooting choosing short term discomfort, like you're you're choosing, yeah, to be uncomfortable right now. But you're choosing discomfort long term for a long period of time and more struggles in your life. So it's like, just acknowledging that instead, I would choose to be a little uncomfortable to make the I mean, uncomfortable in the way of to make the ice cream to know that it's going to mm -hmm. pay off for me in a positive way. Cause it really does all come back to energy. I just think there's a, there's a big issue with us wanting to focus on quick and convenient with so many things in our life and not realizing the it, cost that comes with that. Yep. It's really in all aspects of life that I, that I thought uh, a little bit of, of work or intentional. I love the word intentional, by the way, I've used, I'm using it so often. Well. I started following you, but yeah, the, to, to really get those intentional changes into your life, you, you get on a path that you think more skeptical. Is that right for me? And when you are at the gas station and you see that candy bar that they literally throw in the way of you from both directions. Then you have to say, no, that does not in the long run serve me because on that 
little bar, there again are 17 ingredients that I don't want to eat, that my body yeah. does not vibe with, that will not nourish me. Even just like, that makes me think about this, Sylvia, because my husband is, he's not a big foodie. Um, He could care less about what he eats, where I like really do care about like, he, I mean, he loves being healthy, but it's like, for me, I'm like, I get bored of certain foods. Like I care about what I'm eating. Like I want to switch it up. Like he could eat the same thing. He sees it as just fueling himself. Um, yeah. So anyways, with him, it's really interesting because he always has abs. Like you can always see them. He all, And I'm like, you don't even do any ab workouts at all, but it's because his diet like is so clean the way he eats. Yeah. But I've noticed his mindset around food. Like he sees it as like, it's fueling him. So it's like nutrition, like it's fueling him to give him energy. And he labels things like in a negative way so that he doesn't want it. Like he's trained his brain. So here's an example. Like he will say things like, like something is poison. Like for example, candy, uh, like that's yep. poison. And it, when you start calling things that, you don't want that anymore versus seeing it as a positive thing. You know that uh, most comfort, air quotes, comfort foods are actually toxic punishments for your body. Yeah. The, the comfort sugar and fries. I mean, that is so toxic in the long run. I mean, all the, the, the bad oils, those fries are being soaked and fried in. I mean, that all comes back in negative energy, in fat deposits, in, in uh, chronic diseases. It's, that will all come back to you. So most comfort foods, I would like to encourage everybody who listens to think, what is my comfort food? And then think about, does that really comfort me? and nourish me or is it actually a punishment that in the long run will poison kill oh, me yeah. make me yeah. sick and so so comfort food is a term that really triggers me because most comfort foods are toxins oh that's so interesting to think about because it, it really makes you think and i'll tell you i was thinking about this yesterday when i ran to the store to get my husband some meds because we both been really sick and um I was in the store and I saw, I love, like, I'm a big, like, I love crunchy, salty things. That's my go-to. So like chips, like veggie chips, potato chips, like those are like my weaknesses and mayonnaise and ranch. I got a lot of them. But anyways, um, <laughs> I was in the aisle and I saw munchos. They're super salty and light, you know? And I was like, I want some of those. But then I stopped and I thought about, and if you turned around the label on that, you know that's yeah. a bunch of crap in there that you can't even, it's not a potato. There's, there's yeah. a bunch of crap in there that you don't even know what they are. And that's not comforting to you. Like, cause I was looking for something. I'm like, uh, I've been sick. Like I want something like, I just want to comfort and snuggle on the couch and watch TV and eat my chips. But it's like, that's a punishment. Like the way that you just framed it, it's like, that's not giving you what it is that you even want anyways. So even just that simple shift in our minds can really help us so that we aren't doing those things that don't align because that's an example. It doesn't align with who you want to be. And there's always healthier options because even if you look at potato chips, there's like potato chips that are made so much healthier. Like if you look on the back of, there's different, I can't think of different brands, but you can look on the back and you can see where it's like potato and maybe it's like a certain I don't know, like oil that is a healthier oil for you, which I want to get into, Sylvia. Let's talk about oils because I know that's <laughs> on your list. But I'm saying even then you can still choose a better example. And it's not even yeah. about being a better option. It's not even be about being perfect because maybe it's like, oh, well, this one's better than the Munchos, but it's not necessarily the best thing I could have. Probably better if I just cut my own potato up. But, you know, it's like it's still a better option than what you would have chosen. And just being conscious in that way and making those shifts, it's still going to help you out long term. So while we're on that topic, I want to talk about seed oils because you talk about avoiding them. I'm curious to know which ones and why. 
Okay, so um, basically all vegetable oils should be avoided. They are really a byproduct from the oil industry and are very toxic. So um, like the granola, uh, canola oil, um, sunflower seed oil, um, all those seed oils are highly processed. They go through several um, several steps of processing. First, they're getting rolled through high temperature rollers to get all the grease out. Then, then there are structural um, and chemical processes that they go through, which really takes all the nutri nutrients out. And then in order to stabilize, because they change the chemistry in order to stabilize those unstable chemistry, they have to add all kinds of processes that really are toxic for, for, the, for the body. So in terms of seed oils or um, vegetable oils, I really only have two in my house and that is a cold pressed olive oil for salads. And you should not really eat that very much. Mm -hmm. And a flaxseed oil, also for salad dressings because that is high in in alpha linoleic acid that your body needs to for several body functions. So those are the only two seed oils that I have in my house for frying and for a hot processing. I use either lard, tallow, or good butter. So in a nutshell, just be thinking about what oils that you are using and the the process that, that they would have gone through. So if you just want to fall back on some, you have the cold pressed olive oil, which can be a good fit for you. Flaxseed oil, you could be frying with a really good quality butter. Um, another thing too is reducing the amount of oil that you are frying with. I was I forget what documentary I was watching, but it was something, maybe it was like a plant-based related one, but it was talking yeah. about how we use so much, no, it was on longevity, like how a lot of us are using so much oil to cook and it's like mm -hmm. it's just not necessary so even me when I'm scrambling eggs it's like I would put like a little bit of quality butter in in the pan it's like a little bit and then I just like put more water in it and I just like kind of fry them up with the water so I'm not even using a lot of oil at all and I've been noticing yeah. that with myself like how much I can cook vegetables without yeah. using that much oil like steaming them in water or like frying in the pan, but with like basically with water. Yeah. So being mindful of that because you can get a lot of calories, a lot of fat, a lot of crap in your body that you don't need, like not good fat from yeah. excess amounts of oils that you really don't make a difference in the taste, but you're just throwing them in the pan for yeah. no reason. Did you know that McDonald's actually used to fry their French fries in tallow? And then those no. were really, those were actually nutritious because tallow is an animal fat that you can eat and they were actually um nutritious if you will but then they switch to vegetable oil and that's when it really goes goes uh into your body and accumulates toxins wow that's interesting i didn't know that yeah. um so you had some more tips around some tips that you had shared with me mm -hmm. earlier around yeah. things that we can do. And one of them, I just really loved that I was about to run up and do it immediately, which you talked about opening your windows daily. Tell me more about oh, that. So that is a, a habit that I took over from my mother. So my mother, after everybody was gone to off to school, my mother would open all the windows. And while she was going from room to room, making the beds of for everybody, she had the house really aerate with fresh air. And when I moved to America, um, the first thing that struck me very odd was the air ducts that the that the air gets always recycled. Nobody ever opened a window, and I'm like, mm -hmm. how can you breathe that oxygen de deprived air? Just like five times a day, you open the door and that's all the oxygen that you let in. So I really make it a point that for for 
five to 10 minutes, I open, and I'm not like my mother, I open just two, three strategic windows. <laughs> so you can house basically but yeah summer or winter and i live in wisconsin where the winters are cold i do that every day yeah i love that because i was thinking about it too i'm like i don't really even do that often especially living where i do with the cold climate it's like yeah. it's easy enough to do is just like quickly open up the windows or make a habit of like i'm making the bed i'm opening up the window and letting some fresh air flow in and how helpful that can be and i also was thinking about this i was telling my husband yesterday when we were out for a walk how we both had been really sick. And I, I told him, I was like, oh, I just felt so good to just walk outside, mm -hmm. even if it was just five minutes for my own energy, when I felt like I was inside all day feeling like crap. And it made me think about, um, you know, when someone is really sick, like if someone has cancer or something like that, and how, how helpful it is to them and their spirits, like not only their mind and their body, but their spirit in general to like, wheelchair them out into the light yeah. into the fresh air and it's like they're like oh this feels so good you realize how grateful you are for something like that like the fresh air when you are so sick and you don't get out very much but like in our everyday lives like why aren't we incorporating those small things of like getting the fresh air to flow through our spaces because yeah. that determines like that impacts our energy how we feel and it impacts the air that we're breathing in our spaces. So I was grateful for that simple tip that you said, like opening the windows daily. I'm like, this is so simple, but I do not do it. So it's easy enough yeah. to start doing. And then um, you talked about another thing, which I am geeking out about this year, and that is growing your own food and how helpful uh -huh. that could be. So elaborate on that. Well, I always tell people when they say, well, I don't have any property and I don't have, I don't know how and where I could do that. I say, if you have the size, the uh, a, a piece of dirt, the side of a bath towel, of a beach towel, you yeah. can start a garden, you know, start with one tomato plant or start with, um, with like five heads of lettuce because they always grow back. So you cut one and while you are, by the time you cut off the fifth one, the first one is grown back. So it's really easy to start and start with simple things that are easy to grow. So growing your own food. And then I love that because so many of us, again, we've gotten so focused on convenience that we've gotten away, but actually it can be really convenient. If you really think about it, it can be very convenient to have your own lettuce right there versus you having to go to the store and get it. You know, when I, when my daughter graduated, we had her graduation party and you know how people always make their barbecues and I'm like, I'm German. I'm not going to make a barbecue for Americans. <laughs> so I made a soup and salad bar and it was actually oh, really I love that. I, I made like three different German soups and then I just had a salad bar and that was actually the first year that I grew salad myself and Dan said hey we're out of salad and I said no we're not I took a knife and I went to my salad patch and cut a couple of salads a little bit of lettuce off and washed it and okay here you go there's more salad there so yeah. it's really convenient you don't have to run to the store you just go out and grab whatever you need and it's it's really you know what you grow you don't put pesticides on there you don't put any uh toxic fertilizers in there so it's again so rewarding and the taste of your own yeah, so much better that ripened on the vine in the back of your own yard that flavor is so different from the food that you get at the store that ripen during transit. Yeah. And it's like the energy too behind the things, like the love that went into the way that you created it. It matters. And then like, it's just, yeah, like you know, it's good. The feeling of making yourself proud too. It's like, I grew that thing. Like I remember one year I had a volunteer tomato that somehow got involved in my uh, hibiscus that landed in there. And um, it grew like, it was like a little baby. There was like two of them. There was one little baby one, one that was like 
<laughs> like it was struggling, but basically it was like one and a half tomatoes that were tiny cherry tomatoes. <laughs> I was so excited to eat that little cherry tomato and it was so good. And it wasn't even intentional that I grew it, but it was like, it was my, my own little tomato. Yeah. And I think that just brings you a lot of joy. Like I love when someone makes you food and you know that it's something that they grew themselves. There's just another yeah. element of joy that comes with that. So I think it's important to think about and considering like, how can we bring more of that into our busy chaotic lives? Like you can, yeah. you could simply just have some herbs in the window that you're growing in some pots and that right. can make a difference and it could be really yummy. I even see when people grow their own mint and they make you some mixed drinks when you come over and mm -hmm. it's fun when they're like, this is my mint that I grew. Like mint is like a weed and you can grow like crazy. So yeah. it's like <laughs> easy enough, but they're still proud of it. And it makes that drink extra special. So I think there's that, the other part that we need to think about is like the extra energy boost that we get mm -hmm. from the joy of creating it yeah. ourselves. Just like when we make a, a home cooked meal and we made it from scratch, yeah. it's like something else like, happens where we love that meal more that is so true the other day i cooked a uh, spaghetti and meat sauce for dan and i said dan i want you to look at the plate the noodles are made with the flour that i grew that an amish oh, cool. that an amish millstone ground for me and with our eggs from our chicken that's the pasta. Then in the sauce was some actually deer meat from a neighbor. He he hunts and sometimes he gets does and doesn't want the meat. So I say, hey, whatever extra game you have, I will take. So that was that was the ground meat from that. Then my own onions that I grew, my own tomato sauce that I froze and garlic that I get from a farmer down the road. And I said, there is not one single thing in here that I bought at a store or it came from a can. And I said, isn't it pretty? And, you know, and, and Dan and it I, is. I love that. For, for five seconds and said, how far have we come actually from from the standard American diet, which ironically the abbreviation is sad, you know, <laughs> uh, from the sad diet to to uh, a diet full with nutritious ingredients. And really that makes so much of a difference. Yeah, it's huge. I love that. I get so, it just brings you so much joy. I like, I'm yeah. excited to get to that point in my whole gardening experience where I can yeah. use all of the things in there. And I, I'm not like, obviously we're not like against going to the store. Like obviously we both go to the store and get things, but it's just a matter of including <clears throat> more into your life. The only yeah. things that you can create um, yeah. that you know are good sources and make you feel good. Now, mind you, the the path from getting everything to the store to now almost getting nothing at the store, that did not, happen overnight that was a process that really took uh 10 15 years that's why i would that's why i said earlier don't get overwhelmed do one little thing at a time and and by the time you you think of it you can actually look back with pride oh my god you know here is what i did little by little and now i'm almost not getting anything at the store anymore yeah I love that and that's such a good point because it that to emphasize it did take you a long time to get to that point yeah um so step by step baby steps all right so let's pause right here and summarize what we learned so far number one it, don't let overwhelm stop you from making these changes in your life that's going to help you feel so much better. Simply focus on taking small steps. And you know, small things can lead to big results for you. And know that this takes time. You got, It takes time for you to implement these changes in your life. So start small. Number two, read labels. Anytime you buy something, grab it, look at the back, look at the label and see what's going on there. What's in that product? Is it toxic to you or is it actually feeling you and serving you? You want to opt for the whole ingredients that you understand. Oftentimes, less is more. 
Number three, change the way you personally label foods. This is huge. Are those comfort foods, those things that you go to when you want comfort or some kind of emotional shift, are they actually giving you that? Is it actually leading to comfort and joy or peace or whatever it is you're seeking? Or is it actually punishing you? And then maybe you want to get into the habit of labeling them as either toxic foods, poison, something. Put it in the negative folder in your mind and that will make you less, it'll make it so that you less want that thing. So let me give you an example. This morning I woke up and I thought about how I needed to go run an errand that I didn't really want to run. And I thought, oh, well, I'll make this more fun because I can stop and get myself a coffee and I'll stop and get myself breakfast instead of me making on my own. I'll just stop at the bagel shop and I grab a bagel. And then I thought about this episode and I was like, wait a second, that's not going to be joy filled for you. You're going to feel like crap as soon as you eat that bagel because it's not from a good source. It's just that white bleach flour that's in it. It's going to spike your blood sugar galore and you're going to feel like crap afterwards. You're going to regret that you ate. Like I thought about that in my mind and I was like, yeah, that's not comforting. That's not leading to the results that I want. So I thought about instead me quickly making it literally took me less than five minutes. I pulled out Dave's bread, which is a really good source of bread. If you're familiar with Dave's killer bread, which is a favorite in my household, um, I pulled that out and I put my own cream cheese on that bread and I made my own egg breakfast sandwich with uh, avocado and lettuce and I added um, a little slice of meat to it and it was so yummy. It was, and I felt so much better than I would have if I went to the bagel shop where I would have spent more money. I'm not saying that you can't go get your own bagels. Actually, Dave's Killer Bread, they also have a bagel line too. Just putting that out there if you haven't tried them. Anyways, um, I just felt so much better. And I was thinking about how, yeah, it might be a little inconvenient where I have to take five minutes, but really would take me long to, longer to go in and get the bagel and all the things. And I would have felt like crap later. Like I really thought through this because I thought about how I labeled my food. I'm like, was that really comforting? So that simple switch in my mind, it helped me so much. And I feel so much better right now because I'd probably, I feel so much better because I didn't eat what I would have originally And I'm not feeling like that crash or anything. I just feel good about my choice. I'm proud of myself. And I had to have that conversation with myself around how I was labeling that food. Was it actually leading to the results that I wanted? All right. So the fourth tip here is to avoid most seed oils. We talked about those seed oils and how some of them are not good for you at all. So instead, making the simple switch to cook with things that are good for you, like ghee or a healthy butter. Um, I think Kerry Gold, that's or Kerry Irish Gold, I forget what it's called. That's one of my favorite butters. Um, I just saw that that was a butter that is Bobby approved. That's one of the resources I'm going to give you. If you are not familiar with the Bobby approved app, I think that's called that. It's got, it's like a thumbs up with a B, the little icon from this guy named Bobby Parrish. You have to look him up. He shares a lot of wisdom around what, what foods are truly good for you. And he actually goes around, if you're not familiar with him, my sister just introduced me to him because she was telling me about products and she would be like, this one's Bobby approved. I'm like, who the heck is Bobby? And then she's like, this, look at this app. And it's this guy. And he does, he goes into the stores and picks up products and he'll tell you about them and say what they have in them that aren't good for you and what you should opt in to instead. He kind of shines a light on some of the marketing that is out there to like brainwash you into thinking it's really good and it's really not. And it's been really eye opening to me. So check out that app because what's really cool is you can use it to scan products and it'll give you like the thumbs up. This is Bobby approved or it's not. But he has a lot of great wisdom. And I've been learning a lot from him by watching these little videos because him going in the grocery store and sometimes he has to like cut it because, you know, a worker is in the grocery store like, what are you doing? Because he's picking up products and he's talking about don't ever buy this, you know, buy this instead. And it's just fine. But it's super helpful. So I recommend that app. All right. And then the other app, while we're on the topic of apps, I am going to recommend Yuka. If you don't use that app, Y-U-K-A. Um, it works similar to the Bobby Approved app where you can scan products and it will tell you some things in it that 
like, you know, what's great in this, what's not so great, just so that you're making more intentional choices. I have found that to be a game changer for me when I'm shopping. So those two apps, and I want you to check out. I'll also link the details to what I'm sharing here in this episode, as well as all of Sylvia's information. Okay, and then let's get to, so we talked about switching your oils. Like really think about it. When you are cooking, what are the oils that you wanna be cooking with? We talked about the ghee, the healthy butter. Uh, Maybe you wanna have a really good extra virgin olive oil um, in stock, always around. I just bought an avocado oil to cook with. And that's my go-to thing to cook with, um, as well as the ghee and the healthy butter. And then coconut oil is great to, to use as well. All right, you wanna make sure they're good sources too. Keep that in mind. And then that's why I scan them with the Bobby Proved app too, to tell me if it is or not. All right, number five is to get fresh air daily. This one's been a game changer for me. I'm telling you, just opening my doors, opening the windows, doing that simple shift, it's like it changes the energy in my space and it's making me feel so much better. I'm, I'm gonna get my husband to buy another screen for our front door just because I'm like, I want more airflow. We need to increase the airflow in this house because it changes everything, that fresh energy. So I want you to think about that, adding more of that into your space. And number six is to grow your own food in some way. If you are not already growing your own food in some way, even the smallest way, Think about how you can get started. And if you already are, think about, ooh, how do I want to take this to the next level? I just got the seed catalog. I forget what it's called. This whole magazine with like, oh my goodness, a tremendous amount of seeds that I'm just so excited. I've been looking at them and creeping. I'm like, ooh, I want to grow this thing. It's just giving me all these ideas and fun inspiration. Um, But how can you start where you're at? Maybe it's like, I'm going to start with my herbs in the window. Or maybe it's like, Ooh, I'm going to take my God into the next level. You know what I'm talking about? So I want you to think about that. So those are the six tips that we learned in this episode. Think about which ones you are going to implement right away. And look out for episode two. In episode two, the second part to this episode, I am going to give you some more tips around some things that have been helpful to me. I have a whole list of notes right here that I'm looking at. So we'll dive into that in the next episode. All right. I will talk to you soon. I hope you enjoyed this and you have an awesome day. Make sure you do something with this information that you just learned. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.